The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. This is Joel. I'm a trainer with Eduphoria, and welcome to our training today. Oh, I guess I need to show my little picture of myself. I have a picture of myself on here, and I also want to take a picture of my backyard because, as you probably know, it is fall, and it's finally starting to feel like fall. Uh, up here where I am, I'm in the North Texas area up by Dallas. Uh, we are having a cold 45-degree day with rain, and it's like the perfect day for me. I love this weather. I have my windows open, and it's just chilly just enough here, so I'm really enjoying the weather. And helping me today is Paige. Paige, you want to say hi to everyone? Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Glad you could join us. And Shanna, I don't know if we'll hear Shanna, but Shanna is also helping us. She's going to share a little bit later in our show. So today we're going to be covering building and editing evaluation templates in Strive. And we're really excited that you have joined us for this session. If you have questions, that's what Paige is for. She's our helpful, as she called it, grape. She told me earlier she's a helpful grape today. So uh, there's a questions box in the window for this meeting. And if you have any questions about any of the information that we're covering or questions about editing documents in Strive, let us know because that's what we're here for is to answer your questions and to address your concerns as we're doing this webinar. So you can post those questions and she'll get to them. I'm going to ask that you put them in the, there's there's actually two boxes. There's one that says questions and one that says chat. And I'm going to ask that you put them in the questions window, not the chat window. Yeah. Thanks. Because that'll help us respond to them better when they're in there. Yes. Because Paige is not allowed to chat. She gets too eager in the chats. I wanted to point out our Strive updates. So uh, these are updates that have happened to Strive within the past few weeks. Uh very recently, uh, as recent as like two days ago, and then uh, October 30th. So October 30th, we had where some districts were experiencing a timeout when they were updating their existing process instances, and that was fixed. We also had users with school walk through appraiser who were unable to view uploaded documents for all users, and that has been fixed. The autosave feature, I know that a webinar recently was done and we kind of shared about that and that's something that we put into effect uh, and have been correcting we know that there's been some concerns about the feature coming on intermittently but I believe we're working on that getting it all set up so it's not doing that as often uh, recently this week the evaluation status report was not counting the submitted reflection documents and that's been fixed users with walkthrough appraiser and appraiser viewer roles combined we're not allowed to perform walkthroughs on staff members, and that bug has also been fixed. And then we also had where districts were unable to use the upload documents to add documents for individual staff members, and that too has been fixed. And these updates, they're in our help website. When you click on help, it'll take you to our webpage, and there's this announcement section that's on the top row. And when you click on it, it'll take you to announcements page. And on the announcements page, it's going to show uh, software updates and releases. And then it has what's called release notes. And those release notes, every week, our support teams release all the updates that have come out for all the various software that they are working on. There's also a link under company announcements that says, how can I receive announcements? And it'll have a link on this page. It's an article that will take you to a link to where you can sign up or have someone in your district sign up. Or maybe you need to sign someone up in your district to receive Eddie's news. And all of this news, it comes from uh, the support teams. It also is our training news. If we're going to be at conferences, we put that information in here as well. So if you sign up for the Eddie's news, you put in your, your email address, your name, your school district, and then you can also select – Oh, just jump ahead there. What type of role you have, and that'll help sort the news for what you need. So if you're a teacher, you probably won't get all the technical announcements that you would if you were like a system administrator. 
And then you'll click the subscribe to list and you're added to our email lists and you'll get all that news delivered to your inbox so you don't have to go searching for it. So what we're going to cover today for evaluation templates, I want to talk about the Eduphoria community. I'm going to show you how to edit your existing templates, the documents that you have in Strive. We'll also show how to build new documents, new templates. Then we're going to show something called tagging dimensions, tagging the standards to the forms. And then Shanna, I'm so happy about this, she's going to do a little report of a sneak peek into what's called Strive Summative, something that our developers are working on to build. So those of you that have joined us, you're going to get a sneak peek into something we haven't revealed to anybody else, showing a new look in our Strive system. Okay, so I'm going to jump out of help, and I'm actually going to go right into my demo account for Strive. And if you're a Strive manager, you know you're going to have this appraisal settings button, and that's going to let you take control of the configuration and management of Strive. And the first place I'm going to start is this Eduphoria community, because this is such a great resource of, res of materials that you can use to download templates created by other people in your Strive system. And so when you first click on Eduphoria Community, if you haven't done this in a while, you'll wanna click on this green button. This is the Refresh Documents button. And what it does is it's gonna search the system for any documents that you may not have and add those into your Eduphoria Community. It, I'm so glad Paige is on here. Paige has been busy. She has actually been making and updating some of these forms where you see an asterisk and the new and caps here. This form was developed by Paige. It has her little name right here. And she's been going in here, updating forms, adding in suggestions that people in the actual community have communicated with us and getting those forms updated with columns and also pre-tagging them so that when you import them, it has all those features already enabled. But just clicking through all these different folders, we have all these different forms that have been added in by members of the greater Eduphoria community customers. When they build forms, they can upload them and uh, put them in here so that they're available to other community members to download, which is great, especially when you get into the evaluation documents, which go down into all the different type of roles that exist within school districts. And you can see when you click on them, you'll get a preview to see that the uh, type of evaluation matrices will match those specific job descriptions for those staff. So if you're ever looking to move all of your different appraisee types into Strive, this is a good way to help move things over to allow people to access those and not have to build all of them individually from scratch. Paige, do you have anything to add about the documents that you've created? No, just that um, if there are any that you have that, that you're using that are not our documents, you need to make sure you tag them when you talk to that that part. Okay, very good. So in here, when you have any type of evaluation document that you see that is something that you would like to use, all you have to do is click import that template. And based on the folder that it is in, it will go into the same folder in your evaluation templates system. And so Eduphoria community, it's like a little shopping mall of all the different forms that are available. And then when you import it, it goes right into your evaluation templates and into the folders that you have to where you can click on those and edit those documents. And here's like one that Paige had made, and I've already pulled it into my system to allow me to edit that document to make the changes that I would like to make. On any form, when you bring it in or when it's already pre-existing in your valuation templates, whenever you click on it, it's going to open up these three tabs. The template information gives you the title. The same title that appears right here is what's appearing in the title here. So for those of you that have forms that have the date on them, that's this is where you would change that date. Now, before you go and start changing dates on forms, don't make any changes to any forms that you're using for the current school year where you're going to change the title until 
we get to the end of year and do that archive appraisals because the archive appraisal step that takes place at the end of the evaluation year, that process kind of uses the titles as the headers for pulling all that data together. So if you change a title of a form that's currently in use, when you do that archive appraisal later at the end of the year, there's going to be some problems. So you just want to make sure only change titles after you have archived and you're getting ready for the, the next school year. You can also change the icon. When I click the icon button, it shows all the various icons that are available in our apps when you can add icons to different things. You can have different icons. And I've seen some school districts where they have uh, they only use the red star for last year's forms. It's a visual way of archiving information. I've seen districts that have all their evaluation forms using the blue puzzle piece, but all their walkthrough forms have the footprints. You know, it's it's up to you how you want to do it. Some people like that, being able to have the different icons to get a quick visual cue, um, and that's up to you. But again, that's that's done where the icon button exists on the actual uh, information tab here. I guess because I didn't click anything, it disappeared. Uh, this is also where you define if a template is simple scored or if it uses advanced calculations. The advanced calculations lets you determine how scores are uh, averaged. Um, they can be done by groups and they can be done for the entire evaluation. So you could set it to where if you have specific groups of buttons together, it'll average all those items or it'll total or it'll select the highest score in the group. Um, but you can select whether a template has that simple scoring or advanced with calculations. So we'll get more into this when we get into the editing. This is also where you select your framework. And this is important when we get into tagging questions by dimension. So when I am in a form and I know that this form is gonna be used by a specific evaluation type, I can select the framework and that's gonna pull those standards for me to access when I get into the edit tab for this particular form. And the frameworks that I have in my system, most people have T-tests, and TPES. I've added a few more into my demo account and where I'm accessing these template these frameworks from is still in the appraisal settings under frameworks. And I want to give a shout out to a district Spring ISD, Christine Hess, which I think Paige, you worked with them recently. Their frameworks, they had several in here that I have not seen. And I pulled one that they had that was called Paraprofessional Staff where they have gone in and they have actually created the framework for paraprofessionals that has the headers of the um, job performance, the interpersonal skills, professionalism, and then their district policies and procedures. They went ahead and had that framework available. So when they are going into their evaluation templates and they are selecting on specific templates, that's one of the frameworks that they can pull from for when they get into what we call the tagging of dimension, which we'll be showing in just a little bit. So those frameworks are available from what I have in the frameworks that I've designed here. Once I select a framework or I make any changes, I'm gonna hit the save button. And I'm not gonna click this update existing documents because I haven't really done anything. The only thing I've done is change the title. I can, I can do that later. But I'm, I'm a, I used to be in a technology department, and I'm one of those save often people. So I'm going to click save as often as I need to. Every different type of template, especially based on the container it's in, will have different options. And so these are the options that are selected for this form. This will let you go in and also see different options that would be available in the different forms that you have. Um, this particular form, it's a reflection document, so I do have it checked to enable the discussion comments between the appraiser and the appraisee. If I didn't want to have that feature turned on and have it be a one-way form, I could select, uh, take this checkbox off, save it, and then that option would not be available on that form anymore. If I was using the uh, advanced scoring, and I wanted my appraisees to see those scores, then I could check this box to display the numeric scoring values to appraisees. 
if I go down into my walkthrough forms and I just select one of these, when I go to the template options, you can see there's other options. And these options, again, they're based on the location of the form in those specific containers. I'm going to go back to this form. So template options, that's where you can select the options that you want to have. And then edit template. And edit template is where you can go in and change the questions or you can add questions. You can change the type of questions that you have. Um, when I go in to edit a template, I like to use this preview button. Preview lets me see. And I don't know if the pop-up shows. Sometimes on these webinars, our pop-ups don't show. Paige, can you tell me if, is that pop-up showing? She might be answering a question. But I, no, like I was talking, but I was oh. muted. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> no, the the, the pop-up is not showing. Okay. I will use uh, that preview button, and it will pop up a view of what a document looks like. So in preparation for this, I actually, behind me, Okay, so I have others who are saying it is showing for them. Oh goodness, Paige, it's okay. Okay, I'm gonna so, slowly. I'm gonna show this. This is a, a picture I took of a form, and it's actually an interesting form. This is one is it's from our community. It's called the Daily Five Walkthrough, and we get questions about this type of form often. And I'm gonna show you a way to fix this. So this is a preview of what the form would look like. It's not an actual view of what it looks like in Strive. It doesn't show necessarily what the appraiser sees or what the appraisee sees. It's just a simple preview of how the text looks and the type of buttons that appear here. This form is interesting because it was in our community. It's one that a lot of districts have downloaded. And then as it's being implement, implemented for the year, we have comments coming in of there's uh, principals who are accidentally clicking on something observed when it wasn't observed and they want to know how to deselect that type of uh, option. And so in this particular instance, this is using what's called radio buttons. And radio buttons just have a simple function of on or off. Um, to turn it on, you click in it, and then to turn it off, that's not really the option. A checkbox would let you select something and then unselect it to remove it. But because it's a circular radio button, its default option is off until you click it, and then it's on. You can't deselect it. So they're wondering how to fix that. How could they fix their form to where it doesn't, do this and cause an act an accidental observation of something that didn't occur. And so the answer is going to be in how we oh, I just lost my little window down here. There it is. I have to go find it. How we can fix that form to where those will appear. So I'm actually going to go into that daily five walkthrough. Some of you may have downloaded this one. You might have something similar. And when I click on it, I can see the information for the title. That's where I can change that icon again. And I'm going to make sure I've selected it to be tied to a specific framework. I'm actually going to say T-Test. And then when I go in to edit this template, I can see specific types of information here. So I want to see where it says teacher behavior and what it looks like in the preview. Okay. So I have my pop-up again that everyone but Paige can see. And it shows teacher behavior followed by uh, columns and rows of information. And that is what this is showing, which is this is what's called a matrix group. If I click on that matrix group, the gold box, it's going to show me my columns and my rows when I click on each of those. So for columns, there's only one column which is observed. So if I want to fix that column to where I can have a second option, I can just put in A, not applicable. Or I could put, oops, you know, that's, I didn't mean to click this one. You know, I could put something there, a second option, so that when I click update now, 
and preview, you can see and now I have two options. So if someone did accidentally click observed here, they could select it not applicable and it would remove it from the observed section. And that would just be going through for each of the columns in each matrix group. Because when I go into this preview again, for teacher behavior, I added that column. But now I need to go to the one that says student behavior, daily five rounds, and add that column as well. So I'm going to close this window. I'm going to go back, go to my matrix group. That's the gold boxes. And click on columns. And I can add that second column. Same for my materials and classroom environment. Click on columns. There we go. And on down the list until when I preview my document, it gives me those options. Except for the place where I haven't gone down yet to do those. So that's a way to kind of fix something that is pre-existing. If I needed to add a section, this new button will show me the different types of items that I can add. A group is defined as a header, and then you can put particular items underneath it that are attached to that group. So for example, where I have comments here in this form, which appears when I'm looking at it in the preview, it has comments, and then there's an actual comments box. So that's defined here. The header is the word comments, and then the item below it is a comment box. If I wanted to add something else to this group, I can add another item, and it just puts a checkbox here notifying that it's a new item. And I can change the item name here. I'm going to just call this one a checkbox. And I'm going to click update. And I can add other items. And here's the types that I have. So I have checkbox. I have a checkbox with a text field next to it. A comment box. Instructions and goal. So with checkbox, if I add a checkbox with text, let me show you these. I'm going to update that. I'm going to add another item. We already have a comment box. This is an instruction box. It's like a grayed out box with just text in it. It's not interactive. It's just information. I can add that here. And when I add an instructions box, it's going to look similar to a comment box, meaning it's a text field as opposed to an item that someone would select. And then I'm going to add one more item, and that's going to be a goal. And I'm going to call it goal. There we go. Easy. So now when I preview this, we're going to see those different items. So here I have my first checkbox, which I can change that wording to be whatever I need it to be. We have a checkbox that has a text field where I can type in information. This gray box that has the word instructions in it, that's an instruction box. It's usually for like a paragraph or multiple sentences of information. And then goal, there's nothing in this field because I'm not on my uh, like a teacher account but when I am in there if a teacher has submitted a goal using the enhanced goals in the goals tab and they want to pull that into a document when a teacher has this form available to them when they click this drop down arrow it's going to show their goals they've submitted and then they can select that goal and it's going to fill in this field into the form including the goal statement the actions, 
the evidence, the target completion date, and the tag dimensions they've set with that goal. And so this is a way. Well, can I make a comment? Yes. That's um, Shanna. The goal question. Hey, this is Shanna. Um, the goal question type would typically be used in a reflection document and not in a walkthrough because it's that goal question type is for whoever is filling out that form. So that goal question type would really be used only in a reflection document. Ah. A side note. Yeah, that'd be better in that goal setting form or in mm -hmm. like the TPES uh, self, uh, what is it, the self assessment and goal setting form. That would be a way to right. the goal reflection at the end of the year. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. So those are better set inside the reflection documents. Good to know. So those are the ways that you would bring those items into your form. They're just particular one set of items, but the key is that they reside inside of a group. And that, that helps kind of keep everything from just being all over the place. And also if you're scoring and you're using check boxes and uh, different types of buttons, then you want to group all of those items together. Outside of a group is the matrix group and a matrix group is any type of columns and rows where you're you're gathering information. And in columns we have it limited to five column titles and it's for two reasons. One is mostly with our districts that are using T-TESS and T-PESS, the uh, different rankings there are scored in five uh, columns, but also just for screen size, if you have a lot more columns, it makes it very hard to view the information on the screen. So we have that set that way, but then rows is where you would add all of the information that would go in for the selection of the different uh, information that you're scaling using the columns. And again, the way that would appear So a matrix group has the rows where you're putting in the information and then the columns would be like the scale, like a Likert scale or a, a rating scale. And you can have five items in here. Paige, are there any questions that I need to review? Anything coming up? Not right now. I think we've answered all the questions that are there. I think as you go through the tagging process, any other questions are going to get answered. So, Good. Okay. And keep asking those questions because we're trying to make sure we're answering everything that you might be asking. So as I was looking at this template, one of the things I noticed is that this is not particularly a T-TESS uh, framework. Like this is daily five. It's not necessarily part of T-TESS. So I'm actually going to remove – t-test from being the framework of this form. This is not a form that I would use the t-test framework with. But I am going to go into a document that is a t-test document so that I can see how to tag the dimensions based on the type of questions that are asked. So I'm going to actually go in, maybe I'll go into my observation document here. Okay, so here's a T-Test post-conference document, and I can select that framework. It's already selected for this one. It's a T-Test framework, and I'm going to click on my edit template, and I can see I have various groups here. I have four different groups of information. Oh, this is great. Look at all these things in this form. And when I go into this type of form, when I drill into it, I like to see the type of information that is in here. And where there are specific items, when I click on an item that's in this type of form, it has where I can tag it by dimension. Now this particular form, it looks like it's already tagged by dimension, but I wanna show you the process. So. I have my grouped items. I've clicked on them to open them up to see the information. 
this is a comment box. So it's not necessarily any type of information tied to a dimension. It's just the date of the observation. This is also a comment box. It was defined as a place where someone's going to put the observation time in the class period. And then here's the subject area. So these aren't necessarily dimensions. But when I get into specific areas of reinforcement, for example, and this is in a t-test post-conference observation document. When I click into it, I can see I have items. And when I select an item, I have dimensions. And if yours is showing no dimensions selected, then this is where you can select the dimensions that are tied to the framework that you selected on the template information page. If you're not seeing any dimensions, so if you click on here and nothing shows up, it's because you haven't selected your framework on this information page. You have to do that step first. You have to select your framework dimensions, hit save. I call it the blink. The screen just kind of blinks for a second. And that means it's pulled those dimensions into this box. So now when I click on each item, and this is a great form because it's pre-labeled 1.1, I can tag that item by this dimension, click update, there's that blink. I can go to the next item, which is 1.2, and I can select the dimension and update. And go to the next one, and all the way down the list. And I know it seems like a long list, and that seems like a lot of work, but the payoff is going to be great, because that page is going to show you something in just a little while that's going to explain how this is going to be very effective for reporting. So here we go. I can go to each one of these and add those specific dimensions and click update. And then when I'm done and I hit save, uh, it's going to save all of these changes to it. Now when I'm tagging by dimension, it's really important for you to know these tags don't show up. They are not visible. The appraisers are not going to see these tags and the appraisee on their documents, they're not going to see them either. It doesn't show up in the preview, and it will not show up in the form. This is something that the appraisal managers, the people with management, are doing behind the scenes to tag their specific questions with the exact framework dimensions and standards for reporting. So it's just informational. It's just going to help you with reporting. All of the things that I'm doing here and tagging, they're completely invisible to the end user. So going through the, I'm not going to go through all of these because that's going to take forever, but just know if it has this checkbox, you'll be able to tag by those dimensions. If I go into another form, let me find a different one here. Eh, that one's kind of blank. It's kind of blah. Here we go. I'll take this one. This 2017 18 elementary walkthrough and if I click on it yes so in this one let me see a preview of it we have our check boxes that's kind of the same I need one that's got the matrix groups I want to click on one here so here's one that is it's a matrix group built in it's gonna have my columns and my various rows of information. It looks like there's no information in these rows. So let me find another one. Sorry, I'm like drilling through. I've been playing in this all day and I just get into templates and I lose myself. Try in an observation. Oh, try an observation one? Yep. No, there's still the items. The rubric. Try the second one down. Observation rubric. Oh. Brilliant. Shanna plays in them more than I do, I can tell. This is great. So we have here a matrix group, and it's going to have our columns and our rows. And when I go into my rows of information, again in the preview, this is what it looks like. So I've got my rows of information, and then I have the columns of the scale. This step is a little different because I do have where I can select dimension down here, but because I have so much text in all these, I have to do a step, which is you have to double click 
on each row item. And when you double click, it puts the information into the edit bar up here. So it makes it active to where I can make changes to the information in here. I'm not going to change this information because it's part of my form. But once it is in here, I can tag by dimension. I can select that dimension that's reflected here, and then I can update that row. And it will tag the dimension to the specific item within that matrix group. So for every matrix group in a form, I can go to rows, and for each one, I need to double click to put it into this row for editing. And then I can tag that specific dimension and click update. It's just going through each one. This one's pre tagged. And update those rows as needed. If I mess up and I put the wrong one, I just need to go back and double click on it and change it to the correct one. If I need to remove a dimension, it's not necessarily the correct dimension or we don't have that one set up, I can just take it out by adding that first blank one, the select dimension. You can see it's removed the dimension for that form. And it's just going back. So right now I haven't selected it. I'm just putting this here and it doesn't give me the update row, it gives me add row, which is to add more rows to the matrix. So it's important that you double click to put the information up here for editing, select the dimension, and then click update row. And as I do that, I'm going to make sure I save, of course. And then when I'm ready, I can click the update existing documents. And all of these changes, again, they're on the back end. They're not seen by anyone. It's only tagging each dimension with that, uh, or each row of information with that specific dimension. It's only seen by me, the manager, and later it'll be useful in the reporting. So it's going through the entire form, row by row, and then down here at the bottom, this one has all the checkboxes, so it's going to be a lovely time of going and tagging all these dimensions. It's something you only have to do once for your forms. But it will be a way to help you with the uh, reporting and to see how all of this will work together. Shanna? Joel, can I, oh, go ahead. Can I throw one thing in real quickly? Just, yes. I, just, I don't know if you said it and I missed it, or, um, but I just wanted to remind everyone that if you use any of the documents from the community that are labeled with an asterisk and the word new, like if you go to observation or or any of them, the ones that have the new there are already tagged. Now the the pre and post conference really it doesn't that they don't have things that need to be tagged, but the observation document or then if you use the entire process, those are already tagged for you and that might save you some time. I know it's probably too late for walkthroughs, but those documents are also tagged. Um, the ones that have that new at the front of them. The asterisk and the new. Yes. Yeah. And they have Paige's name right here. <laughs> She's the author. But yes, if I were to pull any of these in, they're going to be pre-tagged and ready. And, and I don't know that the question has come through. I haven't seen any of the questions yet. Um, something to think about is, you know, you don't right now is not a good time to go into the community and pull in brand new forms and completely change your evaluation process because your principals are already in the middle of doing all of this. But it is a time where you could pull things in to start looking at for setting up for next year. Uh, one of the things that we talked about last year when we were introducing Strive back in uh, March and April was starting to have the conversations with the people who do the appraisal process, the HR people and the principals, and looking through the forms and looking through everything that's taking place to make sure that everything is working great. Uh, this would be a way to start kind of fielding ideas for those future meetings for planning for next year, the evaluation process and getting ready for those things. Editing documents, if you're going in and editing documents that you're currently using, 
if you're making any changes to those documents now, it shouldn't affect uh, the scoring or the implementation. So like that, that form that we use that we added that column when we are putting in uh, that additional information, that's not going to affect, that's not going to affect the scoring of the document because it's just adding like another column here for the not applicable selection. Um, but if you're going in and completely revamping a form and you're not sure, please contact us. Uh, you can contact training at eduphoria.net. What we do is all of us have a demo account like I'm using here. So if it's something that you're not sure about, let us know. And one of our trainers, including me, we will test it on our end to make sure everything works logistically for you before you do anything. But, you know, sometimes people just want to verify that information before they implement. Shanna, are we ready? Oh, yes. What are we ready for? <laughs> We're ready for you. Okay, are we going to talk about? Um, okay, I want to stay right yes. there before you go. I, I am. Wanna... I'm going to wait till you tell me to reveal. <laughs> okay, I want to mention a couple of things that, and we haven't had these questions come in yet, but it's also probably because you guys haven't been playing with the, with the um, tagging. So a couple of things that have come up with with some people that have tagged before. You'll notice that there are certain items that possibly would. Um, like a comment box that pertains to an entire domain instead of an individual like a dimension um, so one of the things that we are um, working on improving so this may this may um, kind of convince you guys to hold off a minute to ta to start tagging these if you do want to to set set this up we are adding the ability to tag a domain to an item. So um, instead of, so like for a comment box, you would, you would have the ability to tag both uh, a comment box to either an entire domain or a, an individual dimension. So that's one thing that we are adding. And this was based on some requests that we've already gotten in from people that are tagging their forms. Um, another thing that once we started looking at um, the summative, you know, the, how the summative is going to work, um, there are some things that we want to be able to tag an entire area um, so that it would bring all of that information in. So the ability to tag a group or um, click on the instruction box because I don't think. Um, the domain one planning instruction box click on that so okay so we can and we can tag those but we'll be able to do domains and dimensions but the blue items the little blue blocks currently you cannot tag those to a dimension or a domain and so we're going to add the ability to tag the entire group and that'll help with our reporting as we move forward so just throwing that out there um, that that is coming um, after currently we're working on the refinement of the dashboard and and how those things work and adding the widgets and then the next thing is is they're going to add those tagging so in the next few weeks all right so if you'll go ahead and click on the um, the mock-up we do have a mock-up now and it's not super <laughs> I'm easy, to read, easy to see no, yeah. go ahead. I was just going to say, so what we're going to show you, it is a mock-up. It's it's not anything that that I have access to test. It's not a a screen that I can zoom in on even. It's 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 like a it's almost like a an image with some hyperlinks embedded in it. But we're going to mm -hmm. show you it's a sneak peek of what we're looking at for summative information. So, yeah. A little drum roll. Yeah. There we go. Hopefully, yeah, this is a visual of, you know, because we've been talking about how the summative will work. Um, so this is a visual of, of how, um, how this will work in the future and why it's so important that you're tagging these forms. So when you, um, in your summative form, um, when you have your summative form and you actually pull it up, you'll be able to pull up the panel on the side. There'll be a side panel that has all of the dimensions. So you see them all linked there. So whichever framework is tied to this 
particular form, it'll show all of those dimensions there. And you can actually click on a dimension. So let's say I want to find for domain 1.1 or dimension 1.1, I want to see all the things that are related to that. So when you click on 1.1 there already, in the form, you clicked it? Yeah, it was already clicked. It's, it's, this is showing the domain one here in the center of the screen. No, that's not. Oh, hang on. I have this one. Uh, yeah, the, okay. There we go. There we go. All right. So this is, um, do you have, do you have a Mac where you can like zoom with your, in your, on your mouse pad? Can you zoom? Uh, I'm zooming in with my keyboard. It's not zooming the picture. I know. Sometimes it works with a mouse pad, but, um, okay. Or, all right. So the first thing that you'll see, and we already are, your teachers are already tagging goals to their dimensions. So if a teacher had a goal in their professional goals that was tied to dimension 1.1, it would show that goal listed here. So as a principal, I can see, okay, this teacher has 1.1 in a goal. I would be, uh, you know, then I would be able to click on that goal and dig into that goal and see what's going on there. Um, the other thing is, again, so that's why it's important for the teachers to tie those um, goals to the dimensions. The next things are the forms. So let's say I have a walkthrough form, and within that walkthrough form, I've performed, I've done uh, 18 walkthroughs. And in all of those walkthroughs, this, this is all of the information tied to, again, that specific dimension. This is all the information that I have. So I'm looking at, I, I can look and see the teacher has a goal. I can look in the walkthroughs and see what information has given me in the walkthroughs. I will be able to do the same thing with the observations. So I could click on the observation. I could see if I've only done one observation, it will just give me that information um, for that dimension. Um, any comments that I've made in those forms, it will they will be tagged. As long as you're tagging them, it will show those. If there's any evidence that a user has uploaded and tagged to a dimension, right now they can upload evidence, but um, and we are going to add the ability when they upload the evidence to tag it to a dimension. So the idea is that every single thing that is in Strive, your for you know your goals, your forms, all of the PD. So the PD, if they've attended any workshops that are tied to this dimension, that would show there as well. Every single thing that a teacher has done or that you have reported on that is tied to that dimension will show in this side panel. So from that, you could, if it's text, you could copy and paste text into your form. You could look at the data and make an informed decision, you know, whatever. So, I mean, the idea is that we're giving you every bit of data that is tied to that dimension for that teacher. Wow. So then you, then you would collapse, you could look at the next dimension, whatever, and then it, it would show you that same information for all of those. So um, and those are based on those frameworks <clears throat> that you have. So your T test, so our example is a T test teacher, but if you're a non T test district, the frameworks that you have by dimension would show up over here for those, those teachers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so that's why that information, uh, you know, you're tagging the forms, that information is important to add there. Now, the good news is that you can tag those forms um, and you, up until, like, I mean, you have up until the time to get, before you guys start doing your summatives, you have that time to tag those forms. Um, and then, and all you would have to do is make sure that you update your existing documents and then it would connect those questions to that, um, to those items and the dimensions. Great. So there it is. <laughs> the, magical, the magical box that popped up on the side. I have to say, when I saw this, and I've, I've only seen this recently, like it's, it's amazing to me what this is going to be doing to pull all that information together. And that's, that's why it was important to show not just the editing and changing 
questions, but to actually be able to go in and tag those dimensions, what the effort for doing this will do, because what it's doing is it's tagging those same dimensions that, as Shanna said, it's part of goal setting. It's pulling the frameworks that you've set up so that when teachers are adding their goals, they're pulling that framework in. When they're uh, when you're in workshop and you're tagging specific courses, you can also tag by framework dimensions. All of that's pulling together, but now we have our evaluation templates also. Even though they had the title T-Test in them, it wasn't until you selected that framework and then go in to edit where you can tag that you're actually linking it by dimension as well so that that summative report will pull everything together to show how all these work work together all these different components goal setting evaluation and professional development wrapped up together by the framework i'm looking at our time we don't have that much time i will say this if the eduphoria community doesn't have the type of form that you need when you go to this evaluation templates section you have the ability to create your own templates and when you create a template it will ask you which section you want that document to go into again it's about making sure it goes into the correct folder and each folder has different types of options available so you would create the title for that document and then you would select where you're going to have that document reside and then it's going to say do you want to create a blank or copy an existing template copying existing will take from what you currently have in your evaluation templates or you can create a blank one and when you have created that document uh, it opens it right up it's here in this test one that i created i have all the same options i had as before change the title change the icon select the type of scoring select the framework for it and then when i get into edit this is where i can choose those items and groups that i want to go into that document and so it's just setting up that document as you would want it to appear and then getting it the uh tags of the framework that you've selected for it as well and I realize I don't have a lot of time to show the setup of that. So what I will show you is the last part of our slideshow here. Um, we have our help. I am really familiar with our help section because specifically for Strive, um, I have been building a lot of the training in there. Catherine has been in there creating articles. Paige has also been doing articles. Shanna even though she hasn't authored a lot, Shanna is the resource for me to post a lot of those articles because she's on our team that's helping with the development of Strive. But if you go to eduphoria.zendesk.com or inside the main profile window when you log into Strive, there's a help in every application except Strive. Help is on the far right. And then clicking on help inside of Strive will take you to our help document. And for Strive for managers, under the section for Strive, I highlighted these articles. Uh, if you need help with Strive frameworks, because I was talking about that quite a bit today, there's an article there that will show you how to build your frameworks. Um, if it's about how to create a brand new evaluation template, we ran out of time at the end. There's an article there that will show you how to do that, as well as how to edit your evaluation templates that already exist. And then this one is new. I put this one up there yesterday, which is step-by-step, -step, how to tag your evaluation templates with those frameworks. And I'm actually going to go into our help here for Strive and into that article for managers down here at the bottom. And this tagging evaluation templates, you can see this is me. I made this yesterday. There's my little smiling face. Um, at the very top here, I put the link to this webinar. But this is literally step-by-step -step how to go through and tag those dimensions. I'm going to zoom in on my screen here so you can see it. So click on the evaluation template, select it, 
you choose the framework, save, and then go to that edit template. I showed you how to do that. Here's how to update your um, matrix groups step by step. There's that double click, tag the dimension, update the row, and then go through the next ones. If you need even more help, I'm so happy to have learned how to do this. I learned how to make animated GIFs and post those onto our help documentation. So you don't have to watch a video anymore. You can watch this quick, I think it's like a 15 second loop of how to tag by a matrix group. You know, it just plays in a loop over and over. You can just have it on your screen, <laughs> watching it over and over. And then scrolling down to the bottom here shows how to tag each of those individual items. And so we're going to be updating and keeping track of our articles, making sure everything's up to date and making sure that we're using current graphics with these little animated GIFs. I call it GIF, you might call it GIF, but it's the same for everybody. So that's in our help. And I think all we have is just our close, which is, you know, we're going to be on answering questions until the end of this webinar, but we do thank you for joining us, and I really hope you have a great week. Paige and Shanna, do you have anything you want to say? You want to say goodbye? Goodbye, and thanks, Joel, for all the great information. Yeah, and Joel, I want to say kudos to you for all that you're doing in that online help. That's awesome. awesome. Thank you. Well, it's for... It's for me as a former in-district trainer. I know the two of you were also in-district trainers, and we want to provide better help for the customers because it comes from our perspective as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're going to close out this webinar. If you have questions, you can contact us at training at eduphoria.net. I know we're still kind of answering some of the questions that have come in, so if you're hanging on there, we'll – keep answering those questions for you. But thank you. And again, have a wonderful, terrific week.